whenever you start with TOSIS examination, start with introducing yourself by shaking hands. This serves two purposes. Number one is to introduce yourself and number two is to assess for myotonic grip. When the patient is going to shake his hands, ensure that the, the handshake is normal and there is no slow release of the grip. Relax. Now please look straight. Now start with examining the face. Look for the facial symmetry and mention that the face is normal symmetric. Then talk about the head posture. If the head, if there is a tilt or if there is a face turn, the chin is elevated or depressed. If there are any of the above, then you will have to mention it. Then talk about the eyebrows. Sometimes in order to compensate for the doses, the eyebrow is going to be elevated. Mention it. Or sometimes there is going to be a brow doses. Compare it with Compare both the eyes and ensure that the brow is at the same level and there is no exaggerated elevation or depression. And look for the frontal crease. Sometimes again to compensate for the doses, the patient is going to have to use his frontalis muscle in order to keep his eyes open. So always mention the frontalis crease. So brow doses, frontalis crease are very important when you talk about doses examination. Then look at the upper lip or, and look for dermatocalysis if there is going to be any droop or any ptosis here okay and look for facial puffiness these are the things that you will have to look at during examination at the same time you will have to look for proptosis you will have to rule out pseudotosis how do you rule out pseudotosis look at his pocket or look ask him if he is wearing glasses if he is wearing glasses, you will have to make sure that the patient is, uh, if the uh, glasses are of normal myopic refractive error or of hypermetropic refractive error. If it is going to be of high myopia, then he probably has a pseudo proptosis of one eye if it is uniaxial myopia and the ptosis could be because the other eye looks proptotic. So it could be a pseudotosis. All these are very important when you do a ptosis examination. Please look straight sir. Then you look at the Hirschberg's reflex. When you do a Hirschberg's reflex, always give a target to the patient. In my case, I ask, I'm asking him to look at the snail and slide. So observe the reflex in both the eyes, orthophoric in the primary position of case. Okay, And you've ruled out uh, uh, strabismus, you've ruled out other causes of ptosis or proptosis. Now we will start with examination. Now there are two schools of examination. Now some people start with ocular motility and they do cover uncover and proceed with the measurements. But I prefer to do the measurements and then go ahead with ocular motility and do cover uncover test. So let's start with measurements. Now measurements are done in a very very systematic and a proper order. And if you are not sure of the measurements, please make sure that you do it twice or even repeat it thrice. Never hesitate to repeat because the measurements will have to be accurate. Now with the patient looking at the primary position, I am going to measure the palpebral aperture distance. What is the palpebral aperture distance? It is the distance between the upper lid and the lower lid at the center. Okay, bisecting at the center. I am going to use a simple scale to do that. So with the patient looking straight, gently placing my hands I measure the palpebral distance. Now it is about 9 millimeters, which is normal. 8 to 11 is considered normal. Now repeat in the other eye. Look straight. It is about 8 to 9 millimeters. Repeat once again. Okay. Now for the marginal reflex one distance one, you either ask an assistant to throw the torch hit or you can do it yourself. So I prefer to do it myself with the patient again looking at distance from the upper lid to the pupillary where the light is shown, where the light reflex is shown, you will have to measure and that's called the marginal reflex distance one. It is about four millimeters. Look straight please. And it is four millimeters here. The marginal reflex distance 2 is from the pupillary light reflex to the lower lid 4 millimeters 
4 millimeters. Now he has some amount of droop, brow droop here. So I negate that gently. And I measure from the primary crease here to the lid. Look, look straight. It is 5 millimeters. I am repeating the same here. 5 millimeters. Now the most important technique that you will have to demonstrate is the levator palpebral function. How do you do it? Is by asking the patient to look down as much as possible. Use your thumb to negate the frontalis muscle and ask the patient to look up as much as possible. Okay, look down please. Now negate the frontalis action using your thumb firmly. Look up as much as possible please. Look up as much as possible please. Repeat it, look down. Look up as much as possible. It is about 12 millimeters. Leave it a function. Look down please. Negate it. Look up as much as possible. Look down. Look up as much as possible. This question is excellent. Levator function. What is important to the levator function is you must not do the levator function standing on just one side to the patient and demonstrating for both right and the left. You will have to, when you do the right levator function test, you will have to use your left thumb to negate. And when you go to the left eye and you compare, you will have to use the right thumb and use your scale with your left hand. So that is how you will have to practice. Otherwise, the measurement is not going to be accurate. So once that is done, you will have to check for Bell's phenomenon. Bell's phenomenon is an all or none phenomenon. Again, you will have to make sure the patient has got good Bell's phenomenon. Otherwise, the treatment is going to be difficult for these patients. So you start with observing lag of thermos first. So ask the patient to gently close his eyes and look for signs of lag of thermos where uh, you look specifically for the space between the lower lid aperture and upper lid aperture. The scleral show should not be there. Close your eyes gently like in sleeping and look with the torch light. Close your eyes. There is no lag of thalmus. Once the lag of thalmus is ruled out and you know the patient is uh, uh, closing his eyes normally, you ask the patient to squeeze his eyes tightly shut. So thereby you are going to demonstrate the functionality of the orbicularis muscle. Uh, squeeze your eyes tightly shut please. Tightly. Close tightly. Now this essentially demonstrates normal orbicularis function. Open your eyes. Repeat again. Squeeze. Yes. So orbicularis function is normal. Now ask the patient to look straight. I am going to demonstrate the Bell's phenomenon. See there are so many ways to do a Bell's phenomenon. But I open the eyes properly with my fingers. And I ask the patient to close his eyes against resistance. So that way you will be able to observe and demonstrate a good Bell's. Like this. Close your eyes please. He has good bells. Okay. The bells phenomenon is done. You will have to do the corneal sensation. Look straight. A week. Go from the temporal side and just gently touch the cornea. So there is a brisk closing and opening of the eyes indicating that the corneal sensation is intact and normal. That's how you do and you go to the other side and repeat the same procedure. After that, you will have to test for Kogan Twitch sign fatigability. How do, you uh, how do you demonstrate fatigability? This is done by asking the patient to look up continuously for one minute and observe the lip droop. Okay, so this is going to rule out myasthenia gravis, which is an important part of Tosis examination. Please kindly look up, continue looking up, count until 30 seconds because in examination you may not have more than 30 seconds. Look for a droop. There is no droop which rules out fatigability. The next thing that I am going to demonstrate is the Kogan switch sign. I am going to ask the patient to look at my fingers. Look here and then look here. Okay, you are what you are going to do with this Kogan switch sign is to observe an overshoot of the eye when you do that. Here, here, 
here there is no overshoot demonstrating indicating that the kogan stitch sign is negative once the cover and cover test and the extraocular movements are done you the ptosis examination is not complete without the marcus gun jaw winking phenomenon you explain to the patient that the, he will have to move his jaw right and left very briskly and look for any change in the ptosis if he has a ptosis you please do this okay look straight and you will have to do this shake your jaw yes now if there is a ptosis make sure that there is no alteration in the position of the ptosis now the last thing that you will have to do is when you have a ptotic eyelid you will have to elevate to see if the other eye is drooping elevate to observe if the other eye is drooping so once that is done you will have to do the third nerve examination specifically where you look for pupillary function check if there is light near dissociation remember always start with the handshake okay handshake is going to give a crucial vital clue about the myotonic dystrophy the second thing is do not hesitate to repeat the test and the measurements if you are not sure of the measurements now if the ptosis is going to be bizarre you will have to think in terms of myasthenia and all the tests that are relevant to myasthenia you will have to very carefully demonstrate to the examiner then always mention the eyes pack test when now the don'ts are you don't bring the scale too close to the uh, eyes because the patient is obviously going to have some reflex blinking and that is going to interfere with your measurement so always make sure you at least have half a millimeter distance between the eyelid and the scale and tell the patient that you are going to put a scale in front of his eyes it's going to be a little uncomfortable and he should refrain from squeezing his eyelids then if the patient is fatigued probably due to myasthenia i it is recommended that you don't continue with the examination till the patient is sufficiently relaxed so if the ptosis is going to worsen you inform the examiner that the ptosis is worsening after especially after the fatigue test you either tell the examiner that you will have you will want to carry off the uh, carry off uh, ice pack test or you want to give patient some rest before you continue with your examination